get to the uh, let's get to the guys up front that need to protect uh, Noah Fafita. Obviously, Wendell Moy has been out. Leif Magnuson has been out. But but there are four guys, obviously, on this line that we've talked about pretty much all year that have been uh, that you kind of know what to expect. Leif, the uh, Leif, Jonah, Wendell, and Josh Baker. But it does look like they feel fairly comfortable with Big Rhino at that left tackle. And if Big Rhino can be good at that left tackle sheer, I think we're looking at a massive, massive uh, question mark added for this U of A team. Yeah, I think Rhino's the guy. I don't think there's any question about it. He's going to be the opening game starter. Uh, I mean, he's he's taken all the reps at once. They haven't even moved it around like they have some other positions with the injuries. I, I'm not even sure who would be second in, in that conversation. It is uh, It is very clearly Rhino at tackle. It's Rhino at tackle. So there again, you have basically your five guys, and that – where we're going with this is that if I know that I've got those five guys, then it becomes a little less pressing. You still wish that you probably had a little bit more depth. I get all of that. But right now, Rhino is that dude. And honestly, Rhino was somebody, when he came into camp out of Bishop Alamany, there was a lot of expectations for Rhino. I mean, you got to remember, he came in with the same class that had Ephesians, Prysock, and Kevin Green. And this was somebody that that previous coaching staff thought very highly of his up of his outside potential, Jason Shear. Uh, yeah, I'm just reading Cartman one at you a little bit for oh, your no, boy. Uh, <laughs> uh, where, where do you calm down? Right, uh, yeah, <laughs> Rhino is, uh, yeah, I mean, Rhino had high potential. The last coaching staff liked him quite a bit. Uh, he has a really good frame and, and he's, he's played well. I mean, he just, and, and I don't know how much of that is he's played well versus the guys around him just aren't better than him. Right. I think that's part of it, but it's not like you're sitting there you're like, man, Arizona screwed that tackle. He's he's looked good enough to be the starter. Right. Now let's talk a little bit about Leif. Leif's been out. Um, Leif's probably going to be out for a little bit. It's nothing like with a leg injury or anything like that. Um, Wendell Moy. Wendell Moy looks fine. He looks good to go. He's not playing for uh, whatever reason. Um, do you care to speculate on this one, Sheer? Uh, there was a lower leg situation he had in the offseason. I, I think it's just being careful. I mean, he, he is he's dressing out. He's doing the individual drills. He's just not doing team stuff. Uh, I, I, I'm not concerned if it was that big of a deal, he wouldn't be out there. He'd be doing, you know, the side training and all that, which he's not. I, I just think it's, it, it's a matter of, you know, being careful. Yes. It's a matter of being careful and we will find out, uh, we'll find out what exactly all that means. Now, uh, the, the unit that is next to the, uh, offensive line that I think we got to talk about a lot. There's a lot of stud tight ends on this team. There really are, and, and it's weird. It's kind of a perfect marriage in that you've got in uh, you've got in Brent Brennan, a guy that wants to use the tight ends. And oh, by the way, I've got four really good ones. The tight ends are wild. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's yeah. it, and what's what's very cool about them uh, is that they're all different, right? Like Miranda's a really big dude. He's probably the best blocker of the month bunch. He can still catch the ball. Uh, Sam Olson is probably the most versatile in terms of receiving. They've used him in a, in a variety of ways. Uh, Tyler Powell is very solid. Dorian Thomas might be the most athletic. They're, they're, it's a good group, and you are going to see, without giving too much away, Mike, uh, people should get ready to see multiple different looks with two tight ends on the field at once. All right, now, Kean Burnett. Kean Burnett. Oh, yeah, him too. I forgot him. So it's really not four. It's, it's yeah. all, all of them could play. Let's talk he and Burnett here for a minute. Um, listen, out of all the player, all these guys are monsters. He and Burnett, though, this is the first time that I think you've looked at him and said, that's the kid that you saw coming out of high school. And something that I think we got to keep an eye or keep a uh, remind about Keon or Keon Keon um, is that. With Kean, he also, he never had a position coach. I think a lot of times uh, people are like, oh, well, his father played in the NFL. His father was a defensive lineman. His father was, or a linebacker, excuse me. His father, you know, obviously, and he mentioned this point. He's like, you know, he just kind of got by off raw talent in high school. Look at him now. He's made some huge catches. He is going to be a big part of what Arizona's doing going forward here. Yeah, a lot of times in high school with basketball and football, there's guys that are highly rated and and you realize that part of the reason why they did so well is they were just better than everyone, right? Yes. Like they were just bigger, stronger, all that. And then you get to college and some of those advantages go away and, and it's taken Burnett a little slower, but bar none, this is the best camp 
that he's had at Arizona. He had a play today where uh, it was a sack where Monty blipped the quarterback, but had it not been called a sack, uh, he made a diving or jumping catch like over the body of Marquise Groves Killebrew, who, which was awesome. I, I envy Dino Babers, but at the same time, I don't. I, I don't know how they get these dudes on the field. Like, it's a great problem to have, but I can make a very good case for playing all five of these tight ends. Well, I think it's also a good situation, though, because, listen, we've got five offensive linemen. We're going to go ahead and su- we're going to go ahead and assume that Rhino's good or that I'll, I'll put it to you like this. that Rhino is at least passable. How about that? Passable. Get it? Pardon the pun. But so we're going to go ahead and assume that. So if I've got it, if I'm running a lot of two tight end sets, then I know for a fact that I'm going to be able to have guys in there blocking. I'm going to be able to have people in there doing a lot of different things. I think that's where it, I think that's where this is super exciting. Sheer is that yes. Um, li- listen, if the offensive line isn't super deep, it's definitely buoyed by a position at the tight end that can definitely help out. Yeah. And, and I think the thing is like Roberto Miranda is very clearly a good blocker. Uh, you know, and Olsen's a good blocker. There's there's ways around it. We've seen fullbacks used in certain formations. Uh, this coaching staff isn't dumb, right? Like there's there's ways around, you know, if the offensive line doesn't show up one game, it's not the end of the world. There's there's ways around it. Um, but I still think the offensive line isn't awful. Uh, it's just right now it's not healthy and it's kind of they're they're rotating a lot to figure out the the best mix of guys. All right, now we've got to talk about somebody. Listen, I'll be honest with everybody out there. Every now and then I'm wrong. I know that it's rare. I know that it's rare. I know that it's rare. But with uh, I was very sad when Kevin Green left. I thought that Kevin Green was going to uh, be a nice little player for Arizona. Um, Jed Fish currently, I believe, has him going third right now uh, at uh, you know third string. Jed. But Jeremiah Patterson. Um, a two-star kid, a junior college kid out of uh, San Mateo Junior College. Sure, he's been electric. He has been, he's one of the three best wide receivers on this entire roster. Uh, you know, I asked Bobby Wade about him, and Bobby Wade said, like, on the film, he was awesome. Uh, on the phone, he was awesome. And he's like, I went to go see him play, and when I saw him in person, I knew it right away. He's right. like, it was an easy offer once I saw him in person. Uh, and he's like, you guys haven't even seen what this kid's going to be capable of. He is, when you look at him, Mike, and I'm not making a comparison that he's this good, but when you look at him and he's wearing the same number, he looks like Cowan. He, that's why I don't want to go that far, but I almost. Right, but you know what I mean? Like visibly, like if you walked into practice and thought Jacob Cowan was still in Arizona, you'd be like, oh, that's like he wears the same number. He's super fast. He's a punt returner. Uh, to me, he's one of the top three receivers. I don't think he starts for reasons that you're not happy about and people can figure out, but I think he's going to play quite a bit. Bobby Wade said again, it's, I think the number is six, I think we're going to see six wide receivers. All right. Now I think the suddenness is also something that the thing with Jacob Cowling that was so amazing to me was not necessarily even the four, three speed. Although let's be honest, that was really good to have. It was his suddenness. Our good friend, Tony Jamino, who you actually like, um, would always talk about the, his, his burst from one, from, from standing to 10 yards. And it was his acceleration was absolutely insane. There's a lot of that with Jeremiah Patterson. There really is. The funnest part of practice is watching the one-on-ones because there isn't one defensive back. And I want to see Takario do it eventually. He's, but there isn't one defensive back that has been able to stop Patterson. He, uh, poor Devin Dunn today was the victim. He, he just annihilated Dunn. Yeah. Goss the other day, he just completely beat on a route. And it's the suddenness, like his cutting ability where he fakes in and then cuts out or whatever, but like it's been unstoppable. And I, and I don't want people to think this kid's going to go out and get like 1300 yards the season or anything like that, but he's not saying he's, it won't happen. He's legit. Like it's, it's a thing. He's absolutely a, a thing. And, and I don't think this is just a camp superstar. Like we've seen before, this kid's legitimately good. He's already won the punting punt return competition. It's a done deal. Uh, they're going to find ways to use him. All right, let's talk a little bit then about the wide receiver. Irish Mike in here, the great Irish Mike. Many people think that I'm Irish. They're wrong. I am not Irish. But I don't care if Patterson starts, but early indications are he should probably get the second most targets. I say silly, silly you. I would still go Malachi Riley, but that leads leads me to something else. Montana Lamonius Craig. Okay, 
Here's where it is. I would love to be part of the Montana Lamonius Craig My Bad movement. So far, not really mu seen much in camp so far, Sheer. Uh, no, not really. He had a decent day today, uh, but he's not. He to me, he's like a possession receiver, right? You need six, seven yards. I'm cool throwing it to him. You need the deep ball. There's other options, right? And and he's not. I don't think he's awful. It's just that when I'm when I'm doing my list of wide receivers on Arizona. Uh, right now he's down the fifth, list fifth, right? Like I'd probably put Malachi Patterson, T-Mac, uh, who am I missing? Um, oh, well, uh, well, I can't say it, but our guy, AJ Jones had a nice, a nice, uh, he had a nice day. day. He had a nice day to do. Today was his best day of practice by far. Ray Mello has been good. Ray Mello is better than MLC in my opinion. has been really good this camp. Yes. So, I mean, it, it just kind of, it just kind of is what it is. Um, that also, let's see Murphy. Yeah. Gringo Billy. Uh, yes. Ray Mello Murphy. He's good. What they also, what's also very intriguing about Ray Mello Murphy to me is that, and I didn't really see this being the case being given his hike. They like moving him around a lot. They like having him in the slot. They like having him on the outside. They're doing a lot of different stuff with him. They're not just using him as a stationary, just slot uh, uh, player there. Sure. Romelo. Yeah. Yeah, I, he's the only receiver moving around consistently. And he said today, Bobby Wade said, look, I have receivers. I don't have outside receivers on slot. And Wade said, if, if a guy obviously is an outside, he'll, he'll stick to the outside. But Ramello was started on the outside. Now he's running in the slot. Uh, they're going to use him in, in a bunch of different ways. And he's probably one of the few receivers they can do that with. All right. Now let's talk a little bit then about the running back. This position is, and um, uh, Alonzo Carter made this uh, point. I. Could be wrong. Could be wrong. Could be wrong. You and Alonzo are BFFs, so I don't want to speak for your BFF. But I don't know that he would trade his running back room for about anybody in the Big 12. He loves his running uh, back room. I can tell you for a fact that he wouldn't trade his running back room for any team. He, and it's not bull with him. If you know Alonzo Carter, he does not BS his players or anyone. He absolutely thinks that they have the best running back room in the Big 12. And I realize that there's guys like, Devin Neal and Ollie Gordon and all that. But he's talking room from top to bottom. They have four backs, five backs that they can absolutely use. Yes. I'm very, very excited. Very, very, listen, let's just be honest here. This offense should be awesome. It's yeah. The only concern I would have about the offense would be the O-line and yeah. healthy. The O-line should be fine. And again, just to reiterate before we get to the defense, it is a big factor here that you do have, if you're going to play two tight end sets a lot of the time, you are going to be able to help out in that regard. You're not going to be leaving Noah just out there standing this.